Today I want to talk about Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream, edited by Jay Rabinovitz, ACE. Harry Goldfarb is a heroin addict and in constant need to finance his next hit. Fair enough. To do so, he either deals heroin himself or takes the TV from his mom to pawn it off, where she has to repurchase it again and again. Harry's my only child. I want to look at the film's opening scene. What I find interesting is that the filmmakers decided to mostly use split screen to establish the troubled relationship between mother and son. It's Harry! Oh, it's Harry! Oh. Hey, Ma. The question is, why? Right at the beginning, we see a stylized version of a game show or infomercial. Harold, please, not again the TV. We never see his mother watching the show, but it is inferred as she runs off to lock herself up, seemingly afraid of her son. Why do you have to make such a big deal out of this, Ma? You know you'll get the set back in a couple of hours. When Harry realizes that the TV is actually chained to the wall. Jesus, what are you trying to do? Trying to get me to break my own mother's set? Ma, is that what you're trying to do? Your own son, your he own He uses son. every trick in the book to make her feel son. bad about his bad behavior. Why you always gotta play games with my head for Christ's sake? Rewatching the scene, I tried to watch each side of the screen individually, but it was almost impossible because the cuts and the shot composition dictate what my eyes track. Ma. Ma. So, let's break it apart. This episode is brought to you by Film Convert. Why are you gonna make me feel so guilty, Ma? On the left hand side, we have the scene playing out from the perspective of Sarah Goldfarb. While on the right hand side of the screen, Why are you gonna make me feel so guilty, Ma? We see it from Harry's perspective. First, I suspected that the split screen wasn't even planned and only introduced after the fact to possibly intensify the scene. The composition of both angles seem to be unmatched. There's no clear symmetry you would expect from having experienced many other split-screen scenes in other films. Who is this mystery child you date? Her name's Niles Chow. So, you'd like to come? But that lack of symmetry, her close-up, him in a medium-wide, couple of inserts, it all creates a feeling of confusion and stress. Regardless, we can always go by the end result and analyze its potential impact on the audience. Come on, come on, Surprisingly, both sides of the split work exceptionally well on their own and evoked emotions. Looking at the left side of the screen, we either see Sarah in a rather tight close-up staring through the keyhole or we see the living room through the keyhole where Harry tries to unchain the TV or talks to her. He's gotta play games with my head for Christ's sake. The pacing of the cuts is rather slow. The mood is claustrophobic. The, the chain isn't for you, it's for the robbers. Then why won't you come out? We feel Sarah's anxiety. See what I mean? You see how you always gotta upset me, Ma? Looking at the right side of the screen, we see how Harry tries to get the TV off the wall and pursues his mother to give him the key for the chain. Your old son, your old flesh and blood, Ma. Is that what you trying to do, your old son? The mood is hectic, loud and threatening. See what I mean? You see how you always got upset me, Ma? The pacing is relatively fast, which reflects Harry's franticness. Even though we see anxious characters on both sides of the screen, they are anxious for very different reasons. While Sarah is afraid of Harry, Harry is scared of not getting the TV and therefore not getting his next hit. If both of the scenes work on their own, why did Jay Rubinovitz and Darren Aronofsky decide on a split screen? Before we answer that question, let's give an open mouth kiss to Film Convert. You heard right, Film Convert is an easy to use color grading tool that brings new life into your story. Film Convert Nitrate gives you a great film emulation and grain, featuring 19 different motion picture and still stocks and eight different grain sizes. And here's the difference. Film Convert has dedicated camera profiles that interpret light and color based on your specific camera sensor. Therefore, the result is tailored to your setup and you can make color adjustments that mimic the raw controls of your camera. Now, take an additional 10% off to whatever current sales they have going on for Film Convert Nitrate by clicking my link in the show notes and using the code THISGUYEDITS. 
Now back to Requiem for a Dream and why Jay and Darren chose Split Screen. By playing both scenes simultaneously, two things happen. A. Visual overload. There's lots of audiovisual information on the screen and it leaves us feeling overwhelmed. We have no choice but to prioritize what to process. That is such bullshit! Just don't put it all on me, okay? Through that, not only do we become witness to the frantic nature of the scene, we actually feel stressed ourselves. B. Confused emotions. As discussed, just seeing Sarah's side of the screen, we feel her fear of Harry. And when we're watching Harry's side, we feel his irrational, manipulative, cold turkey type of behavior. By watching both scenes at once, we can empathize with both characters and their state simultaneously, which leaves us with a mixed and uneasy feeling. This feeling we experience as the audience makes us understand viscerally the relationship between mother and son. I'll come, me and Marion, we'll, we'll come for dinner. By showing the scene in split screen, we learn about three different things at once. Harry's emotions, Sarah's emotions, Harry's and Sarah's relationship. I was perplexed about how I was going to do a fully subjective movie if both characters were on either side of a door. And that sort of led to the idea of starting to use split screen. Some of the best filmmaking happens when we get to feel what the characters are feeling. You are confused, aren't you? Frightened. That's all right, I can help you. Through the combination of Harry's and Sarah's perspective, we can understand both characters and their relationship with each other better. To accomplish that, we can ask us two questions when approaching any edit. What does the main character feel right now? And how can I visualize the feelings through editing? Sometimes you want to be more distant from the character. Both ways can have merit. But if you want to make the audience feel what the characters feel, keep these two questions in mind. If you haven't watched Requiem for a Dream, I would highly suggest checking it out. It is one of the most stylistically edited films I know, where the substance actually dictates the style, which in my book is the best way to be stylistic. With that in mind, happy editing. I can't help myself, I can start myself. I think I got everything I need, but I'm under stress. I'm on a deadline. Two months ago, I released a free mini course called Secret Editing Hacks, and over 2100 of you already joined. Anoop, who is a seasoned editor cutting for a widely known agency in London, sent me an email where he reported applying my technique and quote, blew everyone's socks off. His creative director wanted to know how he pulled out such a great cut and after learning about it, requested the sign up link for My Secret Editing Hacks. So get in on it while it's still free. Pro editors don't rely on talent. They develop a system that guarantees that their cuts are always the best they can be and is efficient. The best way to show you to bring up an old example. The system I use is something I developed and refined in over 20 years. Take advantage, click the link and get access to my secret editing hacks for free. Thanks for watching and happy editing. Dull day, dull day, dull day, dull day. What will my future be? That I ran out of smokes I put some old clothes Grabbed the keys Then closed the door 